Hola, hola, my name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator, esthetician, purveyor of all things cosmetics. And today we're doing a full day wear test and try on of Rare Beauty. I'm very late to the game. Obviously they've been at Sephora now for a minute, but they only just recently launched here in the UK. I got my hands on them. If you don't follow me on TikTok and Instagram, you missed out on the fact that I went to an event here. They did a little pop-up. It was called the Rare Beauty Cafe right in central London. Robert Welsh was the guest of the evening and he did a masterclass kind of showing like a natural, but semi full glam evening time look using the entirety of the rare beauty lineup and it was actually really interesting robert such a sweetheart he was so nice and it was actually a public event anyone could buy tickets to go so it wasn't like some influencer event but i went saw the master class enjoyed in the festivities and the bubbly and then i spent a lot of money i spent approximately 156 pounds and i bought pretty much one item from every little part of the brand. I didn't buy two or three products, I think, but I just wanted to get an overall look as to what the brand was about, how the products wore on oily skin. And then this actually was an incentive. This was, you spent, I think it was $75 and you got a cute little makeup bag signed by Selena. So super cute. This was all purchased. I paid for this myself, cash money. So right now it is 4.45 in the evening. We're gonna do a full application, kind of break down, swatch some colors and do like a full face. And then we'll do an eight hour check-in and see overall if this works for oily skin I will prime half my face so we'll have that comparison and my thoughts on rare beauty by Selena Gomez we love seeing a beauty influencer line and one thing about rare beauty and I've talked about this with things like Fenty compared to REM beauty with Ariana is Selena's very active in the marketing behind the brand and I think she's very present in owning up to the fact that it's her brand and she loves doing these interactive things on social media like she did a whole video with Robert on his YouTube channel where they did like full faces together since it was launching at Space and K so I think I really like seeing that active presence by her and overall I've actually heard really 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 good things about the brand overall the only product I've really tried is their blush and that was because my boyfriend got me the blush for Christmas so I played around with it a little bit but yeah I'm gonna bring you guys in and let's get started okay so we are up close and personal you can see actually I have like a lot of redness on my cheek right now just because I went a little bit heavy with some of the actives last night and I do have a couple breakouts so we are testing a little bit of the coverage of the products in terms of what I have here in the bag I bought 270 neutral and 230 neutral and it's because for 230 neutral this undertone looked really, really beautiful and I thought this would fit well for me, but then they matched me. Also, it was really bad lighting in there, but they matched me to 270 neutral. Mind you, I did actually self tan. The video should be out by now. I have a whole video where I did a self tanner all over my body and my face, so I might have to go with a darker option. But then I did get a concealer to match the 270 neutral, so we'll play around with what those look like. I did buy the primer, so I'm gonna prime my right side just to see what that looks like. I am testing out a new sunscreen right now, moisturizing, but it's nothing crazy, so I don't think it's gonna really affect the overall wear of today's makeup. But let me swatch the foundation shades next to some of the regular complexion products that I normally use. So swatches of the products from right to left. This is the Rare Beauty Foundation in 270, this first one. The second one is 230 Neutral in Rare Beauty Foundation. This is 290 in the Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Foundation. This is Maple in the Fenty Matte Stick, and this is 290 Pro Filter Concealer from Fenty. So these are three ones that I use at varying times of the year. This is more of my general all year color. This is when I get a little bit more tan. So you can see with the 230 in the Rare Beauty, the undertone for these two is very, very similar. This one's just a little bit more light, but considering the fake tan situation and everything I'm gonna be using the 270 neutral for today. So in terms of priming, she has a couple different options. I did not buy the eye primer because I don't think it was available at the moment. I think it sold out by the time I got to the little kiosk. But I do have their face primer, the pure diffusing primer. I'm going to prime the right side of my face just because I have oily skin. I don't really have pore issues, but I just want to see like when you have oily skin and you get oily throughout the day, your oils do make your texture a little bit more prominent. So I just want to see if this affects that at all. I don't know if this has any mattifying claims. They do also have their Always an Optimist 4-in-1 Mist. This is intended to set the face, refresh the face, and also prime. I'm not going to use this to prime just because I don't know if you can tell this is technically a dual phase product there's oil that's kind of suspended in this so you shake it up and spray it very similar to the glow recipe mist so I don't know if that's necessarily appropriate for my skin type to prep that's why I want to use this primer so I just have a pump of the primer here and again I'm only going to prime my right side I'm going to work that press that in when it comes to these pore diffusing primers pressing it is the key to success really you know what let's prime the eye to see if this works for that. I mean, right off the bat, I think it did a little bit to like mattify a little bit and diffuse the appearance of some texture. It feels more like a gel. If you have tried the Fenty like mattifying primer, this just feels more like a little light gel cream. This feels more like a thicker hydrogel situation. So I really like the way it feels on the skin. It has a light feeling that it's dimethicone, but it's not to the severity of like the Smashbox primer. So I actually really like the texture of that. I just looked on the Wear website. They're about to launch, looks like a SPF tinted moisturizer. So that's actually kind of exciting. I feel like a lot of brands are definitely going in that 
low maintenance, low sheer coverage, glowy route. So that's gonna be cool. And then in terms of the primer, I don't know if you can tell, this side to me does look a little bit more diffused, but a little bit just more matte. The claims for this, it's a cushiony gel primer, agree. Smooths away the look of pores and fine lines, agree with the pores. Extends makeup wear and actually hydrates the skin while fighting shine all day. I can agree with most of those claims as to right now, minus the makeup extending claim, but it does feel nice on the skin, nice gel texture. It does feel a little bit more moisturizing, hydrating, and it doesn't feel silicone-y. So I'll definitely love that. And I do look a little bit more matte. So now let's get on to the foundation application. Again, I bought two, 270 neutral, 230 neutral. I'm most likely going with this. I feel like realistically mixing these two and like figuring out a ratio that'll work would be my perfect match. But today I'm just gonna be going in with the 270 all over. I might highlight with the 230. The claims for this is it's an innovative, long lasting foundation that combines the weightless feel of a serum with buildable medium coverage for truly breathable, layerable wear. Lots of shades in this, at least over 30. Don't know the actual number. Shade range looks pretty nice overall, especially with the undertone mix. All I've heard about the foundation is that it might not be the most suitable for oily skin, but let's hope that with the primer, we might see a difference in that. But yeah, I'm going to take the product on the back of my hand and build up that way as opposed to going directly on my face, just because doing it on the back of my hand allows me to build up coverage. And I'm going to be taking my Morphe R36 brush for this. You see that shade match I think looks really good on my forehead. And notice my cheeks were very, very red and I feel like this covered it very easily, covered it very, very well. This is very lightweight and I felt it when I swatched it. This has a specific texture that it feels like it is a higher concentration of pigments suspended in like a semi-volatile silicone base. And what that means is that the silicones are the kind that evaporate out very quickly so that it allows the foundation to set. And so I feel like that's the vibe of it. It's not a very moisturizing feel, so it's not like a very like heavy foundation. Like it is very, very weightless. I don't know if I like that feeling though. The foundation itself is very, very thin. So when you like, get it on your hand, it has like a very, very, it's not like watery, you can, see, you can see it's not running, but it's not like a gel in that it's fully solid. It's a very, very thin, very lightweight consistency. Yeah, I'm just doing a very light buff. Okay, so that's one side blended and I actually still have a good amount of product on my hand. This. This blended in very quickly, very easily. Coverage, actually, it's very controllable, but I feel like with just a little bit of product, I got a good amount of coverage. The color match is actually very good for this fake tan right now. It might be the primer, but it went on like butter. Like my skin looks very smooth, very airbrushed, and I feel like it just like clung on to the primer really nicely. But let me try it on the side without the primer and see if I still feel the same, but overall, it went on really well. Do note though, I am glowy. I'm very glowy. And I know the brand does have a foundation brush. I did not buy it. I did buy their concealer brush though. So I do have that for application. And I actually generally tend to use these kinds of like very loose brushes that are more used for like powder, like highlighting, illuminating, because I feel like I get a lot of control with coverage. It looks a lot more natural and it helps to diffuse and get a really nice clean blend. Okay, right away I can tell you, side with the primer definitely works a lot better. The foundation definitely clung to the primer a lot better. This side, I don't know, I, I blotted, so I don't know what this, what this is all about, but this side, I feel like the foundation's not sticking to my skin. My texture is definitely more pronounced, and there's areas where it's like not setting into my skin, it's setting like on top of, and you can definitely see this is more glowy on this side than on this side. But I do love the color, 270 neutral. Perfect with my fake tan. Let me go in with the concealer next. Again, I did get only one shade of the concealer and that was 270 neutral to coincide with the foundation. Rare does the same thing Fenty does where these are 270, but I don't know if you can tell on camera, they aren't the same shade. 270 concealer is more of a lighter complementary shade. So it's intended to help brighten up. So it's really interesting, worth noting. So if you want a, a skin color, this might not be the same shade you want to get. You might want to go a little bit darker in the concealer. Right in the inner third, a little bit in the outer third. Also, I don't know what's going on in my nose. It looks like the foundation's like not setting in. So I'm just doing a little bit of concealer there. Let me let this cook down for a second, and then we're gonna go in with the Rare Concealer Brush. I don't know if you watched my video on the Ami Cole wear test and whatnot, but I also got their concealer brush. Really similar vibes. It has this like curved shape to it. It is really small and tiny, so it's able to nicely fit in the contours underneath the eye to help blend that out nicely. I don't know if you can tell, this is a little bit more golden in color, more stark yellow, which is nice for neutralizing purpley, bluish darkness underneath the eye if you have like a more medium skin tone, which 
definitely do. I'm gonna start by blending out this area by my nose and then center of my forehead. Love the way that blends it out. I usually have weird texture stuff in the center of my forehead. I did prime most of my forehead though, so let me hit up the nose. I don't know if you can see on camera, but my nose is like red. Again, I don't feel like the foundation's sticking there very well. Obviously with the pandemic right now, my 13th reason is masks and how masks just wipe off all the foundation from my nose. I like the concealer a lot. It's very similar in texture. It's that light, very volatile silicone texture, but I feel like it's blending in very nicely. No texture issues. It's sticking to my skin, but it looks so skin-like, so smooth. So the under eyes have been cooking now for a second. Let's blend those out. And again, I'm just going in with a stippling motion, kind of keeping that coverage very focused in the inner third where there's more discoloration, obviously. And then the outer third, because of how my eyes are shaped, the outer third, it's like my eyes are kind of round. So the inner third goes in, the outer third goes in. And so there's always darkness in that outer third. And plus, depending on how I like shape my eye, I'll always kind of bring that outer third up a little bit just for like that lifted effect. That's what that looks like blended out. Realistically, I should have done this underneath the foundation and blended the foundation on top for a little bit more of a natural look, but we live, we learn. Blending out the other eye now. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but she's smooth. She's giving better. She's giving youthful, hydrated under eye. I like the way it looks under both eyes, primed and unprimed. So let me set my face a little bit. I'm going to do kind of a multifaceted set. For longevity and texture and just to test things out, I'm gonna go in with a layer of the 4-in-1 I'm an Optimist Primer. Always an Optimist Prime Primer. I wonder if she did that on purpose. Claims for this ultra fine all-in-one face mist packed with skin loving ingredients to hydrate, prime, set, and refresh for an uplifting glow that lasts. Again, it says it's supposed to set. Details on this because I'm like, why does it have skincare ingredients, first of all? They say it's going to leave a natural radiant finish without feeling greasy or sticky but again it has this bi-phase situation so there are oils in it so realistically mm, you got oily 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 skin you want to be like matte matte i don't know about all that but this has niacinamide in it it has sodium hyaluronate so i like a hyaluronic acid derivative and then a few botanical extracts so it says lotus gardenia and white water lily soothe calm and nourish skin if i'm not mistaken white water lily might have antioxidant benefits as well i see that a lot in korean beauty and then panthenol so like it really supports the skin moisture i actually kind of really like seeing panthenol in a setting spray because that tells me it's going to be like juicy and like have a certain tackiness to it that it helps to cling to makeup. So that's why this might be a really good primer for those with more dry skin. Let me shake it up to mix the phases and then spray my face and then we'll set with powder on top of that. That's just going to help the powder kind of adhere a little bit better. Let me blend out the under eye real quick before I do that. Makeup trick, take the end of your makeup brush and roll it on the under eye where you tend to crease just to pick up a little bit of excess product prior to setting. It smells like a spa. It's very botanical, which I don't mind. Bergamot, lavender, orange, clove, jasmine, oils. So yeah, like a lot of botanical oils. Eucalyptus oil in there as well. So there's a good amount of essential oils. The smell to me is very relaxing, very soothing. It gives spa, but for those with sensitive skin, especially around that bergamot and that lavender and that orange oil, definitely something that's worth noting just because those could potentially be sensitizing. Let's fan. And then once this gets a little bit tacky, we're going to set with powder. I did not buy the Rare Beauty powder, so I'll be going in with my tried and true fancy but letting the setting spray set a little bit so it gets tacky allows the powder to again stick a little bit better so that you have basically like think of it like a light layer of powder sitting on the face that's going to help with oil absorption throughout the day so as it's setting you can see how we're looking very shiny so let me go in and set the under eye I'm doing a light set this is just again the fenty setting powder yeah my under eyes look really good look really good next time i would definitely 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 go in with the concealer first and then the foundation on top only because since the foundation itself has a good amount of color i don't want to go on top of it with the concealer and get like max 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 coverage and do all these layers of product because i think it's nasty and tacky in my opinion on me doing that concealer first would kind of color correct and then i could just do the foundation on top to do a lighter layer of both and get a comparable effect but also right now since the concealer is more yellow it just looks like I have like a puddle of yellow underneath my eye that didn't blend into my foundation perfectly. One thing I will say is I feel like that setting spray definitely makes you a little bit more tacky. It's not my favorite feeling in the world. Also, that mist is not as like smooth and lightweight as I would like. I mean, we know I'm a Fenty stan, but let's be honest. I feel like the Fenty setting spray, I like that mist a lot more. It's a lot more of a subtle like whoosh as opposed to the rare one, which is more like, pfft. but also the Glow Recipe Mist is even better mist than this. I like the mister on that one. As of right now, primed and unprimed side both look comparable still. So nothing crazy in that regard yet. By that I mean both are matte, but I actually can still see pores on the prime side, so. Okay, so next let's do bronzing. And I got two of their Happy Soul bronzer sticks and I got two shades. I got Happy Soul and Always Sunny. And to show you the shades, it's what they look like. This one did fall. 
sorry. This one is Happy Soul. This one is Always Sunny. And I got both of them because I'm like, oh, this one looks more neutral cool. This one looks more warm. So contour bronzer. This one is so dark on me. So, so dark. These are very, very creamy and very pigmented, which actually to me is a little bit of a con. You don't have a lot of control over how it blends out. And to me, you just, you get pigment payoff right off the bat. So if you're like mid 300s, Always Sunny is going to be a better option for you. Happy Salt, even to me, I'm like, oh, it's a little bit dark. And honestly, like it doesn't seem like that much of a dark shade, but when I blend it out, it just looks really stark on me. So I'm not the biggest fan of this formula, but only because to me, the color payoff is a little bit too instant and too gratifying. I mean, some people want that. I don't. But with this, what I do is I take it again on that Morphe R36 brush and I pick product up off the stick and then I buff that out. And I do the lightest touch with this because the pigment payoff is so crazy to me. And again, I have a fake tan on. Like, I'm technically a little bit darker than I normally would be. And the pigmentation on this is still, like, jarring to me. Okay, so that's how that blends out. Looks really nice. It's very, very creamy. And obviously blends out perfectly over even, like, a powdered face. My skin looks really, really smooth. I didn't lose any coverage. It's a nice formula. It's just, it's really creamy. And I'm, like, debating should I have gotten a lighter shade? But the lighter shade just looks like it wouldn't have really done much to me. Like, it was intended for, I think this is the second shade in the line. So I think the lighter shade was for like fair skin tone so if this is for like light medium skin tones that is ooh. obviously we hit up the nose i do think the undertone is like actually really nice though but i think i would have liked like a cool cool and then this one and that would have been good for me i did not get any eyeshadow palette so i'll be using this as my usual eye contouring sculpting products boom so that is happy soul worked into half my face it really is a nice shade it's a nice product i don't have much everything i'm complaining about is like really just personal preference but it does look really nice i do really enjoy this but let me do the other side The shadow palettes that Rare had were actually really, really cute, but I'm just not like an eyeshadow person. I don't do that kind of like full glam or that kind of like nighttime glam for like several reasons, but nothing really spoke to me in that regard. So I just said no to getting one of those. I did want to get their eye primer though, but again, it wasn't available at the moment. So that's that bronzer blended out. Again, love the color, love how it blends out now that I know how to use it a little bit more. But if you love like a contour and you want a lot of pigment payoff and you love a cream product, which I think cream is very much the mood right now, I think cream is very forgiving for the most part and you can blend it out very cleanly if you do overdo it therefore I'm not completely mad at it and then the last steps for this again I did get the blush for Christmas as a Christmas gift for my boyfriend this is the shade joy this is I believe one of their dewy blushes with rare they have two different finishes they have dewy and matte the colors don't exactly overlap very well necessarily so it's not like you can get the same shade one in dewy one in matte that's one issue the names are very interesting it's really giving Bible study names so like oh I know a girl named joy I know a girl named hope but one thing I know about this and one thing I can tell you about this is that a little bit of this goes the longest way possible. So what I'm going to do, because I also did get their illuminator, this is in the shade Flaunt. I'm going to do one side layering them. So put the blush down first, put the highlight on top, and then one side blending them in together. I know which one I prefer already, but just for showcasing wise. And just because I know that the mixing them together thing was a little bit of a viral hit on TikTok for a second. So let's try it out. Off the back of my hands, some of Joy and buffing that out. Like, see, look, I just did the smallest dab. On camera, I don't know how much it's picking up, but in person, this is like pigment. And I think it's honestly, it is very beautiful. And it's very easy to correct as like a liquid slash cream product. Go on top of this with a little bit of excess foundation on a foundation brush or sponge, and you can kind of dampen down the severity of that. Color-wise, the color is beautiful. I think it gives me very much like sun-kissed. It looks very, very natural, not natural, but like it's a very realistic color. And I think it blends out beautifully and the finish of it is really, really nice. So I'm not complaining about that whatsoever. However, let me take a dab of the liquid highlighter on top of that just to see. To me, this is actually very subtle, which is interesting considering like the Fenty version of these, which are like shimmer payoff. That right there is the Flaunt highlighter. You can see it's giving like metallic. It's like a very cool tone champagne color. One thing about all these products from them, complexion product wise, is that they all have that like, high pigment, very volatile silicone texture. So they're super, super, super lightweight. And you really can't feel them on your face, which is nice for, I think, a lot of people. They don't want to feel like they're wearing makeup. Okay, so we're glowy. We're we're shining, we're radiant. It's nothing metallic though. All very skin-like, all very flattering. Let me mix those two together now and blend them on the other side. Okay, so we got Joy and Flaunt there. I'm gonna be taking my Fenty Hound's toothbrush, their highlighting brush, mix them together, and then me. Me. 
One thing I, th I really appreciate about these two products though, especially mixed together, is that if you want to do like a very natural look and just do some concealer under the eye and then just blend these across the face, it'll melt into the skin really beautifully and you get a very natural flushed look. So these are really good for like no makeup makeup days or people who want to be very low maintenance but want that kind of like flush of color to like look a little bit more put together. I think these are definitely the solution. So with that being done, that's every product that I bought. Let me go back in and reset my face and then do like a little end of application check-in. Also my eyelids are hella crazy right now on both sides. Again, always the Optimus setting mist. Let's shake that up. My only thing with that setting mist is that that scent is really strong for you. It is really overpowering at first. And plus that smell like might set into your clothes, so you're gonna smell like that all day. Which on second application, I'm not sure if I love it as much anymore. Okay, taking a powder puff from Laura Mercier, working the powder into it, and then we're just pressing that in. In person, I like this side more, but on camera, it looks very pronounced blush and whatnot. And on camera, this side looks better. But in person, to me, this side looks a little bit more like pronounced. Setting wise, I think the prime side looks the best right now because I feel like I can see a little bit more texture on this side. But right now, it is 5.30. Let's do a seven to eight hour wear test, see where I am at the end of the day. I'm just staying home today, so I'm not doing anything crazy. I think I will blot just a little bit throughout the day just to kind of see overall, like with blotting and whatnot, how the makeup stays on my skin. Primarily, I will also take notice to how oily this side gets that's primed versus the unprimed side. I'll check in in eight hours. So here we are, eight hours pretty much on the dot from the end of the application footage. And I'm gonna be honest, I actually put this makeup through it today. First of all, I made this one pan chicken pot pie. It's a specific recipe from Bon Appetit. And I was sobbing, cutting those onions, crying. I had to like obviously blot my tears and whatnot. And this makeup's not like Fenty where it advertises being like water and sweat resistant. I mean, overall, like, makeup is still there. I stopped blotting for like the last five hours. So kind of what you see is the general shine. But that being said, makeup is for the most part very intact everywhere it needs to be with the exception of right around my nose area and that is A, kind of normal, but B, because of the crying, and right now it's like the weather turned very drastically in the UK, so like my allergies are acting up. I've been blowing my nose, so I think that's kind of like normal. I do have a little bit of wear on my under eye, but again, I was crying. My eyelids are creasy. Creasy, greasy, messy, but that is normal. And I think my favorite part of this overall is my forehead. The center of it where I put that concealer. Very into that concealer. I really enjoyed that concealer. That looks really, really nice. Blush and highlight, still on. And I don't know if you like are aware, of, but like generally blush is one of those first things that starts to wear. It just kind of fades the quickest, I think, out of all complexion products. Still present, still there, still going strong. I mean, visibly, you can see on camera, prime versus unprime sign. I'm gonna be really honest. I don't think there's much of a difference at this point. I think if I just blot, I would look really, actually, let's just test right now. Where is my powder cushion? From far, like me, even from, even from up close, actually, this actually, looks really good for eight hours of wear. I'm not mad at it. I also did put on sunglasses to film a little TikTok short. I did put on a mask to go to the corner store to get some wine. I did fall asleep on my couch for like 30 minutes. This makeup seen a little bit of use and wear today and it looks really, really good. Would I change anything about this? Yes, 1006%. That setting mist, I do not think is my tea. I think I'd rather use that and I actually really wouldn't, but I would prefer to use that more any skincare capacity. Oh, it's my hydrating toner. I would prep my skin completely different for today to make today look and work a lot better. Really did like the primer and then in terms of setting it I just would not use that setting mist. I have other mists and actually they're much more affordable. The Elf Stale Night Microfine Setting Mist this actually is a banger. Someone said it was a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury setting mist that is like very, very heavy duty, high wear, like makes your makeup stay put. Really have been enjoying this one. I would argue my holy grail, like affordable drugstore setting mist is the Make It Last Matte from Milani. I would combine those two, but the way I would set my face is do a soft set with powder, do those mists on top, and then as those set in a kind of tacky, redo a layer of powder. And that would, I think, lock this in and make it last a little bit better and a little bit more elegantly and gracefully throughout the day. But I am not mad at this. And I think it worked out really, really, really well. And I think arguably, you know, obviously, See, depending on how you prep your face and how you wear it throughout the day. This can be very, very oily skin friendly. I'm a big fan with the texture and that it really is light as air. You cannot feel it. I don't know if I like that. I prefer to feel my product and I don't know how I feel about the way the foundation feels on my skin when it blends out. But if you don't want to feel your makeup, this is the foundation and the concealer combo for you. And then that highlighter and that blush separately and combined together last. 
they last. I had a swatch on my hand I forgot to wash off with oil cleanser. So I just had like highlight blush combo on my hand and water would just beat off of it, run off and it like lasted on my hands for a good few hand washes. So overall, very, very happy. Still kind of want to get the eye primer, but with my luck, I have never found an eye primer outside of one. And it's actually technically a mineral sunscreen that has prevented my eyelids from getting really greasy and from creasing all day. I really want to try their skin tint. They're just announcing it now. It has a very decent shade range. Like the shades are nicely dispersed throughout the entirety of the range. Again, it's going towards that whole like sheer minimal effort, like your skin, but better look. I think I want to try that next and see how I feel about it because this foundation to me, there's a time and a place for it. I'm not heavy duty so much anymore. And that's why I think I really want to just rely on the concealer from this line because I really like the way it looked, like how it blended out. And I think if I mix one of the foundations with it, it'll be like a perfect match. So with that, that is my one day long wear test review of the Rare Beauty's initial launch. Let me know down below in the comment section. Have you tried the line? What your favorite products are? What your thoughts on the products are? Or if you share any opinions with me or did I not use some of the products right? Sound off below in the comment section. Let me know. Obviously, I'm trying to do some more makeup content. I'm trying to explore more makeup brands, do line reviews and whatnot, as I have done now in my cosmetic science course, my section on color cosmetics. And so for me, I'm like refinding a love for color cosmetics. And I've always been a makeup girl, but I've just always been like a Fenty girl. So let me know what other lines or brands you want to see me try out. I can do a more drugstore version of this or more high end. I think next on my list is Charlotte Tilbury. I really want to try Charlotte Tilbury. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy video content on my channel. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. It's all glowed by Ramon. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.